So hello and welcome back. Today we will have lecture 6-1 on particle filters, in particular Bayes filters, and our example will be Monte Carlo localization. So just as a review of the topics covered in our advanced mobile robotics course with a focus on probabilistic robotics, the topics include localization, path planning, mapping, SLAM, kinematics, and sensors. So far we have covered kinematics and sensors and right now we are dead in the middle of localization with a hope to get to SLAM, path planning, and mapping by the end of the quarter. Please come along and I hope you enjoy. So for lecture 6-1A, Monte Carlo localization or particle filters, the learning objectives are to introduce Monte Carlo localization, to describe how MCL can be used to globally or locally localize a robot, describe how MCL represents the posterior belief by using particles, explain how random particles enable MCL to solve the kidnapped robot problem, and first we are going to define localization. So localization is the problem of determining the pose of a robot relative to a given map. It's basically answering the question for the robot, where am I? So localization is a problem of coordinate transformation. How do you transform the robot's local or relative frame into a global frame if you know the robot's map? So probabilistic algorithms for mobile robot localization are basically um, variants of Bayes filters, which we've been talking about throughout this course. So if you look at this nodal graphical method of localization down here, what you'll see here is that you'll have a robot at a known position, X sub T minus one. And then if you send in a motion control, and then you update that information with sensor data with respect to the map, you can then determine where the robot is by then passing that information onto the sensor model and then inputting the motion model again and iterating through this as the value of the shaded nodes are known, the map is known, the measurements and the controls we will know because those are the inputs and outputs from the robot. And then can you infer the robot's position? So using those gray nodes, you're going to try to figure out XT minus one, XT and XT plus one. So let's talk about a little localization taxonomy, local versus global. Localization problems are characterized by the type of knowledge that the robot has at runtime. So if you're doing position tracking, we assume the robot knows its initial position and localizes by accommodating noise in robot motion, as well as possibly sensor data like from an encoder. This is called local localization, which basically means the robot localizes with respect to its local reference frame. Pose uncertainty is approximated by our unimodal distribution or our Gaussian distribution, which we've seen before. In global localization, the initial pose of the robot is not known. So the robot has the difficult job of using posi position tracking and it cannot use a unimodal or Gaussian distribution for this. This is also a part of the kidnap robot problem, which is a variant on global localization where the robot may know where it is in the world, but then it is somehow teleported to another location in the world where it now uses a motion and a sensor model in order to, reco in order to recover from that error, that error and figure out where it is in the world. This is a key skill set for autonomous robots. The other taxonomy for localization is static versus dynamic environment. In a static environment, only the robot moves. So the only variable or quantity that we have to consider is the robot's pose as it moves through the world. Obviously, in a dynamic environment, other objects in the world can change location over time. This is a much more difficult problem. For example, there could be people moving. If you're using a camera, lighting conditions can change from daylight to night. Doors could be open or closed. Furniture like chairs could be pulled out from tables or pushed into tables. And you have to localize in that dynamic environment. There could also be a passive versus an active approach to localization. In passive localization, the module only observes the robot operating. So the robot is controlled by other means. For example, maybe it's doing 
random wander or mapping or some other type of behavior or reconnaissance is just doing whatever the robot's everyday task. And based upon the way the robot moves in those everyday tasks, we have enough information to be able to facilitate localization. In active localization, the algorithm that controls the robot is being done with the explicit task of localization to minimize localization error. And obviously this would yield better results than a passive approach because the controller is designed just to make sure the robot localizes. Um, but the key limitation is that it now requires control over the robot, which means if there's some other task that the robot should be doing, it won't be able to do that. So what you see here is another figure for my text, figure 7.3, was an example situation that shows a typical belief state during global localization where the world is symmetric. So in that hallway, the robot reaches a local maxima and it is never able to actually localize until it goes into one of the rooms because the rooms are distinct. So until you move it into the room, one of the rooms, it won't be able to determine where it was in the hallway, but once it's in the room, it's completely localized. So global localization algorithms are Grid and Monte Carlo can solve that global localization problem <clears throat> and they can process raw sensor data unlike our local unimodal Gaussian techniques. They are non-parametric, -param means they are not bounded to that unimodal distribution or the Gaussian distribution. And they can solve global localization and also in some instances, the kidnapped robot problem as well. So a particle filter is an alternative non-parametric implementation of the Bayes filter. It is similar to the histogram filters that we discussed in the previous lecture because because particle filters approximate the posterior belief by a finite number of parameters. However, it is different from histogram filters because of the way it generates and populates the state space. Posterior, particle filters represent the posterior belief X of T by a set of random state samples drawn from this posterior. So particle filters, in other words, represent a distribution by a set of samples drawn from a distribution such as a Gaussian um, distribution, such as Gaussian. This representation is approximate and non-parametric. So our particles are, donate, are denoted by xt, where we have xt1, xt2, xtm, and so on, where each particle is an instantation of the state at time t or the probability that the robot is at a given state given its sensor and motion model. So here are a couple of figures that show this distinction between the histogram representation of a continuous random variable and the particle representation. So in the histogram representation at the top left from figure 4.1 from the text, the gray shaded area in the lower right plot shows the density of the continuous random variable x, which is our Gaussian. And the histogram approximation of this density is overlaid with the light gray. The random variable is passed through the function displayed in the upper right graph. And then the density at the histogram approximates the resulting random variable Y. So they are plotted in the upper left hand graph and the histogram of the transform random variable was computed by passing multiple points from each histogram bin of X through this nonlinear function. So this is a way of, of plotting our probability of y by going through some other function first. At the bottom right, what we have here is a particle represented by a particle filter that passes through that same nonlinear function g of x. And then based upon the samples drawn from the Gaussian random variable, the samples are then plotted in that upper left figure, which results in those samples distributed along the random variable y. So what's our motivation for particle filters versus histogram filters, which we covered before? Well, discrete base filters using the histogram filter has a fixed resolution only up to the size of the bin. So although it is relatively straightforward to implement, there are trade-offs such as high competition costs and high memory complexity, which we discussed in previous, the previous lecture. So another disadvantage of histogram filters is the discretized continuous space. So, Particle filters or Monte Carlo localization are a way to efficiently represent 
this space with a non-Gaussian distribution. And the basic principle is to set a state of hypotheses about the robot's location or posterior belief, which we call the posterior, the particles. Then survival of the fittest. So we then looking at our sensor model, figure out which particles make most sense for locations for where the robot state could possibly be. And then we resample that in order and we iterate through that until the robot is able to localize. So in Monte Carlo localization, the belief of the robot state is represented by these particles and it is applicable to both local and global localization, similar to the grid based Markov localization. And then MCL is one of the more popular localization algorithms in robotics. It's also used in autonomous vehicles because it is easy to implement and tends to work on a large range of localization problems. So here's an example of what this looks like for a sonar with this sample based particle filter localization. We have a robot that needs to localize to represent itself and uh, as a value of X, Y theta, and we're going to remotely control the robot. So the robot actually started in the center and it traveled and then was driven into one of the rooms because remember we talked about until it gets in the room, it can't completely localize. So over here, we're just representing a dummy place of where the robot is with the sensor data because the robot doesn't really know where it is yet. And what the robot has to do is it has to figure out things like, is it facing east or west? If it's in the corridor or where it's in the hallway. So all these red dots are potential locations or hypotheses for where the robot could be. These are our particles or our probabilities of being in a certain state. So this robot used 24 ultrasound measurements to localize as the robot moves, you will see that the particles move as well. Okay. It's un uniformly distributed when it first started because the robot has an equal probability of being anywhere in that space. So here's a video of what this looks like as the robot localizes. And what you should see is that the particles, based upon survival of the fittest are going to start to converge on the robot's actual path and location as the sensor data updates as well. Okay. So as it's figuring out it's in the hallway, it's going towards the hallway, although there are a few places where it looks like it may be in a room. And then we now have the two local minima values. And then once it enters the room, it's going to enter two rooms. If you notice that bottom right enters as well, but the moment it enters the room, it's going to completely localize. And that second set of red dots should start to disappear because the robot has now localized into the room. Notice that the overlay of the sonar data in blue is not completely accurate, or we're getting a few false positive and false negative values, which looks like some of the rays have gone through a wall, which we know cannot happen. Okay. So a mathematical description of what we have here is we can also have a set of weighted samples, which means we now have this a set as described by the state hypothesis and the importance weight. This is what we need for survival of the fittest, where we don't give equal probability to all of the particles because the weight now can be calculated, for example, sensor data. And we know some of the values won't, won't make sense for where the robot's located anymore. So these samples now represent the posterior P of X, where we multiply the weights times Delta S sub I of X, which are all the summations of the possible states. So particle filters represent a belief based upon random samples where the estimation is a non-Gaussian nonlinear process. And the Monte Carlo filter is based upon survival of the fitter, fittest, which basically means we use some type of condensation bootstrap filter or some kind of filter where we then do weighting in order to converge upon the values that would most likely be where the robot's located. And some of the texts that you could read about this are on filtering, computer vision, or dynamic Bayesian networks as shown here. So for the function approximation, so you have a particle set, which is a hypothesis that can be used to approximate another function, which is now not parametric, not linear, may not be Gaussian. So you have a bell shaped curve for the hypothesis that has uniform weights. And we have the particles here as well. And the more particles that fall into an interval, the higher the probability of that interval. So 
How do we draw samples from a function distribution here? So you don't have to sample uniformly. You sample by weighting or survival as the fitness, as I said before, where weights are represented by W and we account for the difference between G and F. So our proposal uniform distribution is X. Our target distribution is the blue line and then our samples are the particles or the black lines at the bottom. And the way we represent the weight is an ratio of F over G where F is called the target function G is called the proposed function, and it is hard to sample from a target, but it's easy to evaluate the target. So the importance of sampling and resampling in landmark detection, for example, here where we have the Sony Ivo robot that has a camera in its nose, and it has these one, two, three, four, five, six distinct color signature beacons as well as a yellow and blue goal that it can use to localize itself so it knows where it is with respect to the beacons the goals and as well as the bright orange balls so based upon the relative location of the landmarks the robot can infer distance to landmarks and where it is so these samples are distributed according to the probability of x given various sensor data such as z1 z2 and z3 so the way you do this sampling and resampling is the target distribution is based upon the probability of X given multiple sensor readings, Z1 to Zn, or the product of the probability of Zk given X times the probability of X over the probability of Z1 to Zn. And then you have the sampling distribution, which is the probability of X given Z1, which is one reading or sensor reading. So that's the probability of Z1 over X times the probability of X over the probability of Z1. And when you divide these two, the target and the sampling, that gives you your importance weight. So you have F over G, where the probability of all of them divided by the probability of this one creates this ratio. And, or you can write this as the probability of Z given the product of all the values except K is not equal to one the probability of ZK given X divided by the probability of Z1 to Zn. So now what you see is instead of having a uniform distribution over the entire space, using your sensor data, you know some particles, like I said, will make more sense for localization than others. And so now after resampling, we see that we are going to more quickly converge on where the robot is in the space and hopefully also not use as much memory or computation bandwidth because we're now making more educated guesses about the robot's location in the world. And so this is what it looks like again where we have now that normal Gaussian distribution G and now we pass that through F which is where our particles now are selected randomly based upon their inclusion in F and so if you notice here, we now have F over G, our weighted samples, where here's now our particle filters, where they're now clustered more at possible places where the robot could be, as opposed to being evenly distributed across all possible locations. And this concludes lecture 6-1 on our introduction to particle filters and Monte Carlo localization. I hope you've enjoyed and I hope to see you again. Have a robotastic day.